the Apache vulnerability that's knocking about at the minute in the uh, log4j uh, library and, and everything. Um, but what I do want to do is I want to go through for people who uh, may be worried about this, may be worried about uh, their exposure to it. Let's face it, it is one of the most widespread um, platforms out there. Uh, this is how you mitigate it using Palo Alto best practices um, and you can start to secure yourself um, against it from from now on. Um, it should be noted, of course, that, I mean, the signature for it was already created. It was created sort of within moments of the whole thing coming out uh, and then that would have been updated. There was an emergency threat update that came out uh, and that would have been in devices, dynamic updates. And this particular one was um, application threat update 8501, which we'll see in a minute um, when, it, when it finally loads. Um, and so this CVE was already in there and the signature was in there, uh, but set to, uh, as you'll see in a minute, set to a, a certain action. And then um, the guidance has come out from Palo Alto subsequently uh, saying to set it to um, block. And I'll also show you where you can block the IP and, and so on. And there's also a second part of it as well, which is um, blocking the, the uh, malicious LDAP call uh, going back out. Okay, so there's 8501, and that would have been, um, that was sent out to anybody who's on the... Um, the, the list for to be alerted to emergency Palo updates and then you'd have come in and just downloaded it and and uh, installed it. So speaking about the vulnerability protection, one of the strengths as we all know about Palo Alto is the fact that it's all in one place. There's no disparate systems to try and uh, configure and run around quickly and, and, and sort of try and close the door as it were. So if I go into my home vulnerability um, which is still remarkably well named. Home vulnerability protection profile. You'd want to go into exceptions and then show all signatures. Now these, the, all these signatures here are all signatures that the firewalls are aware of. So when you have a vulnerability, they are then being looked at against the uh, severity is high, medium and so on, where they're seen, obviously was in, in the rules here, uh, and you would have high uh, block IP source, uh, 60 block IP source and destination for critical and so on. So it would be blocked in this particular instance because if we look at the threat IDs, which in this particular case are 91991, we can see that it's a critical anyway. Okay, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to put in the exception now uh, and how to how to block it. So we'd enable the exception because the default is reset the server, although we have the critical to block the IP. You wouldn't click on that, you click on that. And then on here you have the options for alert, allow, you wouldn't want to allow, block IP, reset server, drop, reset both, reset client, reset server. So the default is reset server, so if it was just set to default, reset server, as you can see there. Um, what we're going to do is block the IP, and um, I would suggest blocking it for maximum amount of time. So we're going to block it for that. Uh, IP source, IP source and destination. I mean, I would, I would suggest IP source and destination, um, however, you know, it, it's it's difficult because you could take down some parts of your network. So if you go IP source, that's going to cover the attacker. Okay. The other, the next one is for 91994, which is there. We're going to enable that one. And again, we're going to block the IP. And then final one is nine five. And 
enable that one. Lock the IP. Okay. So now when we go back to our rules, our rules remain the same. Our exceptions have all been put in. Click OK. And you can see there's exceptions three. There's now six exceptions. And if we go back into it and clear that list, we can see that we've got our exceptions in there. OK. So a couple of things to, to think about is the fact that if you're not splitting SSL, so if you're not doing HTTPS inspection, of course, these can be hidden within HTTPS. So uh, for internet facing, so web servers and, and any any sort of um, any application you've got on the uh, that's internet facing uh, that is going to be vulnerable to this, you would probably want to do a reverse proxy. So you split in the you terminate in the SSL on the firewall, so the firewall can see the traffic. And of course, in inside, it's going to be a lot easier. So the next one then is to go to security and then what we're going to do now so the second stage of the attack if you've watched it and i'll actually put a link to uh quite a good video actually you can see the attack and the next one we're going to do is we're going to put a rule in i'm going to put it in at the top and this is going to be our our block rule and again this so this covers second stage of the attack no not the not the Iraq attack uh, call to malicious elder okay and then, so this is going to be so going out to or coming in from um, untrusted sources so outside Everything I've got is is going to be outside to outside because that's going to block it outside. And then obviously I've got NAT rules that hit there. Application is, this is where we add the LDAP. There we go. And we also add the RMI. Uh, if I can remember the actual there yeah, and we add them and those are the two that are then that is recommended by um, Palo Alto so we've got the LDAP that we're blocking to an untr untrusted um, destination actually do you know what I'm going to go back to that I'm going to do it and do this as well because thinking about it you know thinking actually we should bin that and we should drop any inside of course because I've got no outwardly facing uh, things no um, GUIs or, or applications that are facing outside so inside to outside because there's absolutely no reason at all for me to make a call uh, to the outside from the inside for an LDAP um, applications there LDAP RMI IOP application default and then the actions is simply to drop and then we're going to log that I'm going to log that to um, Threat Cortex logs. So now, so now we're going to see that. We're also going to be able to log it as well. So if we see anything that is making a call out, what I would suggest then is to run a report on that rule at some point, and then that way you'll be able to see if you've got any compromised hosts. Okay, so that that essentially is it. Um, if you are, if you're not um, splitting the SSL, so if you're not doing HTTPS inspection. Bear in mind that will reduce the effectiveness because what the firewall can't see, it can't uh, it can't combat against. Um, but ultimately, if you're worried about Log4j and you've got Palo Alto firewalls, these are the rule sets that you need in order to uh, to combat it. Okay, so I'm going to commit that. And that's it, and that's it done. Um, although, as I say, you should also be well aware of the fact that any time any signature was seen from the moment it was placed into the app and um, application and threat uh, update, 
it it would have it would have reset the default action was to reset the server i believe so it would have sent a reset packet to to the server the only reason i think we want to drop it to a block and block ip is because obviously it's a good idea to block the ip based on the fact that if somebody is trying to attack you from that ip then they're clearly a malicious user so for that period of time and possibly even longer uh, that IP should be regarded as a malicious IP. But also as well, because if they see the reset come back, they're aware of the fact that there's a there's a service that's, that's answering that, or there is a, there's a device answering it. I suppose the best, literally the best thing to do is to block it, block the IP and send nothing back to the server. So you've got no, you have no uh, indication at all coming back um, to the to the attacker. So that's it. Uh, it's a really quick one, just to just to get around that, just to sort of get this out there. Um, give me a shout over anything, and um, hopefully like and subscribe, and I will uh, I will catch you all soon.